Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to show you how I go about pruning uh, several butterfly bushes that I have in my yard. Before I get started showing you how to prune butterfly bushes though, let me uh, cover a couple things I know I'll hear in a, any video about butterfly bushes. Number one, they can be invasive in some areas of the country, mainly the Pacific Northwest. Uh, and there's a way around that now uh, because there are sterile cultivars of butterfly bushes. The ones in my yard, a couple of them are older. They're definitely not sterile cultivars. But like I say, in my area, it's not an actual issue. I've grown thousands and thousands of butterfly bushes in central North Carolina for, tra for the trade. And, you know, I I've seen a couple seedlings um, come up from those, but uh, al almost none. And so um, not an issue in my area, but it is an issue uh, for, for, some, for some people. Secondly, um, when we're talking about a butterfly bush, we're talking about a plant that just feeds uh, butterflies, but it's not a host plant uh, for butterflies to lay their larvae. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, whatever butterflies you have visiting your butterfly bush, uh, Google them and uh, find out what host plants you need to be planting in your yard so that um, so that they can complete their life cycle of not just eating, uh, but also um, uh, reproducing. So the next question is, is why do I prune them uh, every winter? Uh, well, the new growth is where the flowers occur. And so uh, this plant is right now three and a half, four feet tall, and it's gotta get bigger in order to bloom because it's gonna bloom on new growth. And it just continues to put on new growth, bloom, put on new growth, bloom, and it just keeps getting bigger the entire season. Uh, butterfly bushes actually have pretty weak wood down at the bottom, and if they get eight, nine, 10 feet tall and you get a storm, it can crack them open, split them open. So it's good for the health of the plant, and uh, I need to control the size of it. In order to control the size of it, um, because it blooms on new wood, um, I need to get the thing down so that um, the flowers will occur here and not, you know, six or seven or eight feet up. Uh, depending on the uh, variety will be the tool or um, how old the plant is. Uh, these pruners will prune, you know, these hand pruners will prune wood that's maybe, you know, this may be this thick, um, but they won't do a good job going down to the bottom of this plant. All I do down here, and I'll give you a close up on the next one, or I'll give you a close up after I do this one. I just look for a bud along the stem. I do not want to cut this thing lower than I see growth uh, down at the bottom. So I'll come up about, I think I'm coming up about 14, 15 inches, cutting just above some growth on a side stem. And, you know, with the right tool, you know, with the right tool here, uh, really, really, really easy work. Um, Again, this other this other side shoot here. I'm looking for a bud along the side stem or on the on on the side of the stem, cutting it just above that. Okay, everything else uh, on this plant can be done with a pair of hand pruners. And again, I'm just looking for uh, buds on the side of the stem where I know growth is going to come from. I don't want to cut below, you know, down to a spot where there's just no growth left on the plant. I got this uh, side piece over here. I'm pretty much going to take completely off. I don't want it heading toward my grass uh, any longer. And again, I'm just leaving. I'm just looking for a bud on the stem and cutting just above it. I'll show you that in just a second. So this shouldn't take you more than a minute or two um, and then disposing of the material, really. But you see where I made that cut right there, there's a bud, um, a new growth coming on the side of it right there. So I left that. Uh, same thing here, that big first big cut I made, look right there. There's growth right below it and right there on the other side right there. I hope you can see that. Uh, everywhere that I made a cut, uh, I left growth right below, right below that cut. And so this one is just ready to go. A little bit of thoughtfulness as I was doing it, but it didn't take but just a second. Let me show you the next one. So look how nicely shaped this plant is. This plant was actually kind of a mess. Uh, it was already here when I moved in. Last year in one of my uh, monthly checklist videos, I cut this one back uh, in that video and it just came out and it's got a, it had a super nice shape all season. There were butterflies on it right out here beside the screen porch um, all season long. Uh, and I can see where I cut it down here last year or where the big cuts were made. These are bypass loppers, by the way, is what they're called. Um, and again, I'm just going to go down here just like I did last year, but I'm going to make sure I'm leaving uh, places where I can see new growth is coming on these. So just above some new growth, about 12, 15 inches high. Again, you can see how fast this goes, and I'm just making decisions based on where the growth is on the stem. I don't want to cut below that. 
so there you go same thing leaving that uh new growth you know at all the cuts um here's one stem that has uh um, com almost completely died back to the ground if you see any of those you can just take them right to the ground that's what i'll do with it it has just expired um, over the years and, and new suckers have taken its place down at the bottom but that can be like i say complete be completely taken to the ground but there you go that's all it takes um, i do this sometime between you know late january and uh, the first of march every year is the best time to do this so here's the last one for this video um, this one's gotten quite tall it's a big vigorous uh growing variety it hasn't been um cut back every year it doesn't seem it was here when i moved in i thought about taking it out but there were eastern swallowtails on this thing all season um, and it makes a nice little screen out here for the street for me anyway uh, during the growing season um, if you've got one that's gone really crazy it's like 10 12 feet tall uh, i would not cut them down to 18 inches i might bring them down to about five or six feet and then wait for new growth to come out during the growing season and then cut it further down once you see where the new growth is going to come from uh, that would be um, if they've gotten extremely woody like that uh, that's probably what i would do this one has not got reached that point yet um, they are it is big heavy uh, stems down here but there's lots of new growth down at the bottom of it so i'm confident it's going to come back from whatever uh, butchering i'm about to do to it uh, so but again probably going to just do maybe 24 inches on this one something like that and just again i'm cutting it right above right above a bud uh, hand pruners would be completely worthless for this job really quick work right above any new growth this is one of those uh, the right tool makes quick work of something you think i've butchered the thing but it'll be six foot tall again in three and three and a half months probably so again um really nothing to show you <laughs> here it's the exact same thing i've just left new growth um if you got a dead you know dead, completely dead piece go ahead and eliminate that um completely but uh, that's it <laughs> you see i just took i just took a seven foot tall a butterfly bush down to uh, you know probably 24 inches tall in no time at all this stuff can go in the uh, compost uh, pile and that's it uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for upcoming content